In 19, not 1899, but in 1989, at the age of 28, counted 28 years, Aaron Sorkin became a player. He was that rarest of commodities, a new American playwright. A Few Good Men was the only original American play produced on Broadway that fall, and it became the show to see if you were in town from Hollywood. Now, after months of rewrite with director Rob Reiner, A Few Good Men is a holiday blockbuster at the box office, and we are pleased to have the playwright and the screenwriter with us this evening. Welcome. Pleasure to be here. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here. We've been, uh, I just saw that Nicholson performance. Uh, and I have, and the tip, and yeah. the, the thing that we just saw, that monologue. Tell me what it was like when you first sat down and you realized that the person reading your words was Jack Nicholson. Uh, it was high cotton, believe me. It was the, uh, uh, the first time I heard Jack read the script was the first day of rehearsals, the table reading. Yeah. About 40 or 50 people sitting around a lot of tables on a big sound stage in Culver Studios. And uh, uh, Jack's first scene in the movie is it's about 35 pages into the script. And it was exciting enough as it was, but he says his first words. There was honestly an audible sound from the group, from all 40 or like, 50 people. Like, it was a sound, <gasps> it, it, you, you can't spell it, but the sound is... It was the sound that only said, that's not a guy doing Nicholson. That's Jack Nicholson there doing it. It was it was astonishing. It was mesmerizing. It really yeah. was. The, every every bit as wonderful as it is in the movie. You got yeah. this incredible indication of what the performance yeah. was going to be. Was it a hard sell to get him to do it? I don't think so. I wasn't the one in charge of, yeah, uh, of, of selling it. Uh, the way he got the role, we uh, we were in a story meeting, and Rob came in. Rob Reiner, Rob Reiner at Castle Rock, where we uh, produced the play, which, and, film. And, and and Rob Reiner who directed the film as well. Uh, he came in for our usual 10 a.m. session. This was several months before we started the movie, and uh, he had just seen the Grammy Awards on television the night before. And Jack Nicholson was presenting a Grammy to Bob Dylan. I think it was a Lifetime Achievement Award. But Rob came in with just with this look on his face, saying, "I know who has to play Jessup. Listen to this," he said to me. And he opens up the script and he opens to that big speech and just begins reading the speech in, in Nicholson's voice, doing Nicholson. And and uh, and we all realized that the, without knowing it, I'd written the role for Nicholson. That Nicholson had to do it. Why do you think the screenplay is better than the play? I think the screenplay is better than the play, mostly because I uh, was a better writer when I wrote the screenplay than when I wrote the play. Uh, the play was the second play I had ever written, so uh, and, and I was uh, I was 28 when the play opened on Broadway. I guess I was 26 when I started writing it, and uh, 30 when I started writing the movie. And in a very short career, three years means that you know it's a graduate program, yeah. it's a master's degree, and I was a much better writer. I'd also had an opportunity in watching the play for 14 months on Broadway. To, uh, to learn from that, yeah. to, to see you know, what's working. There were things that I uh, was never wild about that I had an opportunity to fix. Did you also benefit from a collaboration that took place with the movie people? There's no question about yeah. that. Rob Reiner and others. Rob Reiner is Rob Reiner's great at many things. The thing I think he's greatest at, certainly the thing I benefited from the most, is that uh, he's really he's a writer's director. And I spent about six months uh, with him working on the script. Six months where he was really, he, that's Rob directing me in and, the movie. And what does he do in that kind of session? What does a director do to a writer? Well, the way we began, the way we began, uh, uh, this, was, this was an exceptional kind of thing because A Few Good Men was something already. Right. It, yes. it was an existing piece of work and not just an idea. And, not, said, just, and not just any old piece of work either. <laughs> that's, that's right. Um, uh, I went out there for a week and he just wanted to make sure before he sent me off back to New York to begin writing the screenplay that I knew what I was doing because I hadn't written a movie before. And He just wanted some sort of indication of uh, what's this movie going to look like? How are you going to do this? And really what I did was just describe the first few scenes that I wanted to write in the screenplay, which I have to say as much as the screenplay changed, those first few scenes that I described are, are what you see in the movie now. Uh, uh, go ahead. The pre-title sequence where, where, where there's the code red and then we go to the, the, the title sequence, we meet Kathy playing softball and plea bargaining, that whole thing. Once I had that first draft, and that first draft was, it was long and clumsy and bulky and, and, uh, and overwritten and there was a lot wrong with it, I came back to, uh, to his office in, in Beverly Hills and we sat for about uh, five or six weeks um, where we just went through the script page by page from the top where he's relentless about detail, where you just begin to fade in on the first page and he'll stop and say, now tell me why we're fading in and why we're not doing this. You know, if a line is, hello, how are you, he'll just stop and he'll get this look where you'll know I'm not going to get past page seven today. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> yes. Are you going to change the play because of the experience with the screenplay? I already have. Uh, we sent out, uh, last year we sent out a national tour of the play. 
after I had finished the screenplay. In fact, we were in the middle of shooting the screenplay. And uh, uh, I was so pleased with the work that we were able to do on the screenplay because of the work with Rob, because of what I had learned from the play, uh, that, uh, that I went back and with the help of Don Scardino, who directed the play on Broadway and who directed the national tour, then went and, and rewrote the play, kind of took it to a, a third level. Would you be a different, are you a different playwright now because of this experience? In I'm, I'm a much better playwright, a much better screenwriter. Well, clearly you're a better writer, but I mean, are you a better playwright because of? I think so. Uh, we'll, we'll know soon. I'm going to yeah. start writing a play and we'll see. But in what way do you know? I mean, what, what did you learn in this process that you could define for us? It's a little difficult to quantify. I think uh, mostly I'm surprised by uh, what I was able to get away with. Uh, in, in the Broadway play, in, in, in what most people saw. And, I, and, and I, I don't mean that in a good way. I wouldn't want to try and get away with that again. I'm, I, specifically, I think the big change that was, that was made for people who saw both the play and the movie is the way in which Kathy, the Tom Cruise character, gets the Nicholson character in the end. And on stage, it was a thrilling courtroom scene. There was a lot of pyrotechnics, and it worked theatrically. It always got a big response. People loved it, and they leapt to their feet at the end of it. It was a bit of a lie, the whole thing. I, I was kind of skilling my way through it. If it, it really, if you throw enough flame and, and fireworks at something, pe people are going to respond to right. it. it. It it just wasn't real. What yeah. happened there? Nothing about it was real. And uh, I, I I was kind of committed to in the movie making sure that we had the same effect, but having it getting to it uh, in, in a real way. I, I never want to fake it again in a play. It's, it's always much more gratifying when you get that response when you know that you deserve it. You're starting a new play. Yes. Yeah. Is, how do you define the difference for you in terms of satisfaction between, let's assume it's an original screenplay yeah. and writing an original play? Well, first I'll say my Hollywood experience has been terrific. I know that most yeah. playwrights who have who've turned their plays into movies can't say the same thing, but uh, uh, my Hollywood experience has been wonderful and it's been satisfying. The difference between writing a play and writing a movie, even if it's an original screenplay, is that in, in Hollywood, when you write a movie, you're the writer, and when you write a play, you're the author. Mm -hmm. The difference is really all the difference. Uh, when you're the playwright, it, it's yours, and everyone who is hired, and you're responsible for hiring them from the director on down, is committed to realizing your, your vision, right. what it is you want, what it is you're talking about. As a writer on a movie, I'm, I'm a hired hand. I'm, I'm the cinematographer, I'm the costume designer. I am hired to realize the director's vision of what this is supposed to be. Was there ever a moment in working with Reiner and, and watching, working with actors that way and you said, aha, you know, I too can direct a film? No, not, not <laughs> I too can about, direct a film. There, there were moments uh, where I felt like uh, I was able to communicate something to an actor uh, that the director wasn't. That doesn't make a director. But you know, Rob can claim as many moments. But does that he, threaten a Reiner when you do that? It doesn't threaten Rob. Yeah. Uh, Rob is a guy who, you know, anybody who has a good idea, he'll listen to them. Reiner, really everyone who worked on the movie, uh, uh, had this wonderful philosophy of, God, we just want to cross the finish line and cross it first. We don't care how we, we get there. Uh, Tom Cruise, you know, there are a, a lot of actors uh, have a problem taking a line reading from a director. Um, What's a line reading? A line oh, reading. The director is, reads it for the. Yeah, the, your line is actor. "Hello, how are you?" And the director says, "No, you want to read it like this. Hello, how are you?" Yeah, yeah, tell, right. Tells you how to say it. Right. Um, and, and, and most and actors will take that. Crews will ask for it. Crews yeah. will relish it. Crews will hear it, get it, and do it. You know. And how good of, is Cruz? Cruz is terrific. Yeah. Cruz is for real. Uh, Cruz is a very, very good actor. Lest anyone think, and it's. Uh, I'm surprised at, at, uh, at the press that you read about Cruz in this movie where they talk about how this is his breakout film, this is the one where we see that he can really act, right. that he's not just the guy who can fly the planes and drive the cars and whatnot. I would have think that, thought that we learned that from Rain Man or from The Color of Money. I would have thought so too. Yeah. How much is Nicholson just being Nicholson in this though? Uh, I, I, well, I don't know. I don't know Jack Nicholson. I worked with him. He was only on the movie for two weeks. If he is just being Jack Nicholson, if this, if, if that, that's enough, <laughs> it works. you know, um, I think that it, it works, and I think it's hard enough to just be you yeah. doing anything. That that that's no tall order. I don't believe that Nicholson is being Nicholson. I think that um, I think that he is an extraordinary actor. It has been for some and time. And came to the set prepared and raring to go. He came to the set ready to play. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is he had he only worked for two weeks, but there were long, long days. That courtroom scene, the scene that we just saw. Uh, that, that's a 17-minute scene, uh, and it's a, it's a very, very grueling kind of scene. A terrific story, a Nicholson story in that scene is that uh, uh, actors frequently 
don't do their own off-camera stuff. In other words, when you're looking at Cruz in that scene and Nicholson isn't in the shot, frequently yeah. when they're shooting that scene, it won't be Nicholson on the other side of the camera. It'll be a second AD right, reading right. Nicholson's lines. Nicholson stayed days after he was needed to just do the scene so they could get the pickup shots of the jury, of the defendants, of everybody else in the movie. Uh, and uh, Rob Reiner said to him, like 72 hours after Nicholson was could've no gone, longer needed, right. could have gone home, uh, said, you know, Jackie, you don't need to stay here and keep doing this. And Jack said, Rob, I just love to act. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back to you in your beginning. There is this story about you that you first started out as an actor and that you were once somewhere in a girlfriend's apartment, you know, yeah. and there was a Smith Corona over there. And you had never thought about being a writer at that? No. I went to Syracuse University and, and, and majored in acting, got a degree in acting. I never had any interest in, in writing. Writing for me was, it was a chore to get be gotten through for an English class. Uh, and uh, a friend of mine who is a writer, he's a journalist at Vogue, uh, uh, had his grandfather's manual typewriter with him and he was leaving town for the weekend and didn't want to schlep it around with him so he dropped yeah. it off with me at the, uh, I, w I was crashing on the floor of an ex-girlfriend's apartment. And it was really that weekend during one of those Friday nights in New York that you have where all of your friends seem to be at a party that you haven't been invited to, that kind of thing. Uh, so and you had nowhere to go but to the typewriter. I did, and it's, it's not a story I tell a lot because it sounds too fantastic to be believed yeah. that I just stuck a piece of paper in a and typewriter. And you created a scene or what? Yeah, I started writing dialogue, which was, and that yeah. was the first time ever I had written dialogue. And what I really hadn't realized, probably not even that night until much later, but what really I had learned in all the training that I had as an actor was I was learning what a play was, and, and uh, that's what I had absorbed yeah. rather than learning how to act. And is it as satisfying for you as you thought acting was? It's much more satisfying. I feel much more confident in it probably, which is why it's more satisfying. Pleasure to have you. Congratulations. Pleasure to be here. Thanks and very good, much. Good luck at the Oscars. I guess the nominations come out, what, February? Uh, I think February 17th. Right. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here. Be here tomorrow for a look at the heated controversy over gays in the military. We'll have New York Senator Al D'Amato and New Republic editor Andrew Sullivan and others. Thank you again for being with us this evening, and I'll see you on Friday night.